Hi everybody, I'm Linda Augsburg, Editorial Content Chief of American Patchwork and Quilting, and in this Show Me How video, I'm going to show you how to make these adorable ornaments that double as a gift card holder, or you can slip a little money in there, or you can put a small present inside. But they also make great Christmas tree ornaments. So click the link below to download the PDF with the pattern inside, and then what you'll need for fabric, of course this is a great project for scraps, but you'll also need one piece that's at least about five by seven for the backing. You'll need two pieces of lining fabric about five by seven as well. And I used satin because it's a little slipperier. It's easier to get something in and out of. Um, so you'll need two pieces of satin and then you'll need a piece of muslin or other lightweight fabric. And that's going to be about, I'd go a little bigger, like five and a half by seven and a half or even six by eight. You're going to want to trace the pattern onto that and then mark the lines that you're going to piece on. Now this is like foundation piecing, crazy quilting, but in this case you're going to leave the muslin in the project. You're not going to tear that away. So you'll also need of course your scraps of fabric and an embroidery thread to do the decorative stitches. You'll also need one five and a half inch piece of ribbon to be the hanger. You're going to trace the pattern with the seam lines and this is actually going to be the wrong side in the end of your pieced fabric. So I've pinned the first section fabric. This is the, my first section I'm going to cover. And I've pinned that fabric, and I just cut a square, in place. I want to make sure I extend beyond the seam lines. In this case, this seam line, the next seam line, and then the last seam line. And I just have to make sure I extend out to, but not necessarily beyond, this outer edge because that's where I'm going to cut and then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch in. So I placed my first one. You can see I cover that area nicely and I've placed it so that it's wrong side toward the back of the muslin. So the right side is facing up in this case, right side up, against wrong side against the muslin. I'm going to be sewing from the muslin side on my machine. The next piece is this section with the thumb in it. And these two go together and then we'll add the third piece, the fourth piece, and the fifth piece. So I placed my next piece, piece number two, again, and its wrong side is toward the back of the muslin. You can see that it also covers nicely the seam line here and the seam line here and then I've got extra out here I'll cut away. Then I pinned and I like to do this just to make sure everything's going to work. So I pin right along the seam line and then I can flip it out and make sure yes if I sew along that seam line I'm going to have coverage in the areas I need it to be. So now that I know I have that I can move one of these pins so that the layers of fabric are held together in place and I should be fine to sew this seam. So I'm going to start sewing this seam at the place there's an intersection because I want that to be, I don't want to go over there. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches and I want to make sure of course my needle position is centered. And I'm just going to sew right on that line. You can see I'm sewing through both pieces of fabric on the wrong side, or on the underside I should say, and then right on the muslin. So you can see I've sewn right on that marked line. Now I'm going to flip that piece out. And then I'm just going to press I have, I have a little pressing tool, only because I don't want to have to go to the iron. Um, but you could iron that as well and just press that down. We're going to continue. I'm going to trim, I'm going to fold on this line, the next seam line, which is the one between two and three. And then I'm going to trim this to a quarter of an inch, just so I have a nice straight edge there. And then I'm going to put on piece number three. Then I'm going to do the same, fold along this line and trim 
to one quarter of an inch beyond the line and then put on piece number four and then trim up here and put on piece number five. So once you get all five pieces attached to your muslin fabric, I top stitched just, or just ran a straight stitch right along the cutting line of the mitten, just inside of it, about an eighth of an inch. That's just so that when I cut it out, all those pieces are flat and they don't flap around as I'm doing the embroidery. Then I cut out along the marked outer edge and now I'm gonna do the decorative stitching. So I've chosen five different decorative stitches to use, one on each seam. And again, I'm starting along the seam line here so that I know this is gonna be the best stitch because it's gonna be the first, the beginning of the stitch. And then as I get to this end, if I don't finish a, a leaf in total or a snowflake in total, that's gonna get caught in the seam allowance anyway. You won't notice it. But I want anywhere that we're intersecting, I wanna start at the intersecting point so I don't go over and sew into the next piece. So now I'm gonna start this leaf pattern and I've put on my decorative thread or my embroidery thread and it's got a sheen to it so I like that um, especially on this ornament. I'm just going to start stitching. Most machines have some decorative stitches to choose from. Some of them have a very simple blanket or buttonhole stitch. That could be used for the whole ornament if you wanted to. But if you've got some other stitches on your machine that you never play with, this is a great time to experiment with them. So now that I've got all of my stitching done, I'm gonna layer the right side of the ornament to the right side of the backing. And I'm just gonna sew around the outside edge, leaving that wrist edge open. And I did the same with the satin fabric, sewing those two layers together. And then once you're done with that, clip any curves and clip in here where the thumb indentation is the thumb, thumb section, because you're gonna to wanna to turn that right side out um, for both pieces and you're gonna need a little more give. So clip those seam allowances, just a few threads from your stitching line. So now that I've got the satin lining mitten part done and the mitten outside done, I'm gonna put the loop right on the outside seam line of the mitten, which is the non-thumb side and then I'm gonna slide that inside the satin lining layer, line those up. If you haven't worked with satin before, it's slippery. So um, it's gonna be a little, it's a little bit more challenging to sew with than cotton, I think. But you're gonna slide that inside. And I did zigzag around the satin just to keep it from fraying around the outside. Then I'm gonna pin that top edge together. And I'm gonna leave an opening along the top edge to turn this right side out. So I only wanna sew about three quarters of the way around, but I wanna make sure I catch that loop in the sewing. I don't want that to be the part I'm hand sewing in. So I'm just gonna leave this area open to turn it. So this is gonna be the most, most challenging part probably of this whole project. And that's sewing this opening three quarters of the way closed. I've got it under the presser foot and I've got my little ribbon sticking out here. You wanna make sure that you do this slowly, take small stitches um, or small bits of stitches and then rotate the piece and make sure that your fingers and your pins aren't in the way of the needle. So I actually took out, I had a pin here, I took that out so I didn't want the needle to hit it on the way up or down or to catch the other part of the mitten opening. So I'm just gonna sew a little here at a quarter inch. Take a couple stitches, then rotate it. You can see I've left that opening and now I'm gonna turn the mitten out and that came right out. Now I'm gonna tuck the lining in that hole. There's my loop. And then you just have to kind of wiggle that 
lining in there so that it's all lined up with the fingers of the mitten. And you get a little extra fuzz with the satin. That's a bonus. And then what you'll do is just fold that seam allowance under on the rest of the top of the mitten and hand stitch that opening closed. So if you want to make a pair, of course, you just reverse the pattern and trace the lines and then you'd have a pair of ornaments. Um, they also make a great holder for a gift card or money or other small gifts. So just start sewing up using your scraps and your decorative stitches on your machine and have fun. Happy holidays.